stands for North 5th Street is a street to remember, both good and bad. You know, uh, it has its ups and downs, but growing up as the youngest of six, uh, there was two girls, four boys in between us, and uh, you know, my mom worked two jobs. And I could see her going that she would always keep her shoes clean and white, but they had holes in them underneath and on the side. But you know what, none of her kids did. Coming up, you know, I didn't really do a lot of drugs like the average probably child today. You know, you, you sneak in there and get your mama's beer or wine or whatever. But from there, you know, I think I started taking on, you know, sneaking and hiding and meeting with the friends up and down the street, you know, meeting at Cleveland Park. And, 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 and so, you know, that went on up until I probably graduated. Before you know it, I was taking my check spending the majority of it, you know, partying and sneaking and, you know, hiding and just all the behavior that starts to come with that addiction process. And so my niece found out that I was smoking it in the cigarette and she told me, quit wasting this money. Let me show you what to really do with it. And she showed me how to cook cocaine and to crack. From there, it was just, I never looked back. You know, everything I wanted to do was in crack cocaine. You could go to any one of these breezeway, I mean, any one of them, and like get drugs, you know. I can remember um, I had just got about seven ounces of drugs in and uh, I had already took a stack of money to my house and some of the drugs I left at the house and then I had um, about an ounce and a half in my pocket and I stuck three more up in the chimney and uh, there were so many weapons and probably 12 or 15 weapons around and went in the back room and passed out and they came in it was TBI somebody like that uh, but they found that they're in the chimney an ounce and a half but the weapons all those weapons and I was in this room they were scattered out over the couch and around the room they charged me and only me for that they offered me 30 years remember calling home one day and, and saying, hey, babe, you know, how you doing? You know, mama love you. And she said, yes, ma'am. I said, when mama get home, we're going to the movies, we're going to the circus, you know, we're going to the park, and we'll get us some ice cream. And she said, mama, that's what you say every time you go to jail. And when she said that, it was like his knife just sticking in me and just turned. And it was so painful that I can remember going to my bed on my bunk and just in this fetal position, crying. And, and I remember my counselor coming and asking me what's going on. And I told her and she said, so what are you really heard about? The truth? How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's an honor to be back here. Well, it's good that Especially you're back on, and on these terms side. and not others. Yeah, yes. that's yes. good. It's insanity to think that, you know, you get arrested for a charge and the people in jail are cheering that you're there. Listen, I'm my best inspirational person. What can I tell myself that I've never told myself? Am I afraid to say I love me because of what I did yesterday? Listen, I committed a crime back in 95 that could have gave me 30 years. For whatever God's grace and mercy, he gave it to me. And I only did eight years. While I was in here, I went to treatment and I, I, I started doing some things different. I started writing down what I really want to do, who I really want to be. And what was on that paper, it wasn't that fancy job, because you know, 
How many of you guys have built a wheel of fortune and we got all the fancy cars on there, the big house, you know, we got all that are made and all that, right? <laughs> is that really what life is? I found that the moment I got nothing left is when I gotta take just one more step. Cause if I don't, I won't see the victory. It's gonna come next. So bring on the fire, try to burn me out. Bring on the wind, try to knock me down. I had to put on there, I want to be able to forgive myself for the decisions that I've made that were not healthy for me and others. That's the stuff I had to write down. I had to write down, I don't want to go out there on the streets and be little and sell myself to another human being for a five minute fix. It don't last as long as your feelings do, right? I'm gonna be back on my feet. When they got to say roll up one, I can hear them hollering, roll up one. It's like, yes, I'm getting out of here. But the best thing they ever did for me was to have somebody outside roll up one in that van waiting. And they took me to the halfway house. He said, Trina, how you doing this? How you staying clean? And I was like, and you ain't using no drugs? I said, no. They said, now if you can stay clean, I know I can stay clean. Tell me how you doing that. And so I started writing them and telling them what I was doing and how to do it and where to go. And I had written something and my friend said, Trina, you've written a program. He said, listen, the only thing you're missing is a house. <laughs> so I just wanted to have the resources available so when they get out, they knew that this was a resource center that they could come and get that help. We started with a transitional house of seven women. We're now able to serve 80 women at one particular time. I believe you deserve a second and a fourth and a fifth chance, but when will you believe so you don't have to repeat the second, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth time? When will you believe in you and quit waiting on someone else to believe in you? Fighter.